So I've been working on a side project uh, that's it's a CNC machine that I've designed from scratch and 3D printed. But to put it together, I wanted to make a, a build video. So a part of that, I wanted to do a little bit of a learning experience on uh, how to actually make a good video. So I ended up making this side project for my side project. So this is a, a 3D printed and designed camera slider. So using microcontrollers and a bunch of extra parts that I actually had from the CNC machine, which kept the cost down dramatically. So what you're seeing right here is me doing uh, M5 uh, bolt tapping uh, directly into the aluminum. Uh, which took forever and then now I'm doing the the brass inserts uh, so these uh, kind of help connect all the parts easily with just using the bolts and everything kind of tying the, the 3d prints together really well so a lot of this uh, was kind of like a experimental uh, trying to figure out like how camera settings worked and like I had no idea what ISO or frame rates or any of those kind of things or shutter speed I guess not frame rate shutter speeds what any of them actually did correlating so a lot of this video is definitely uh, overexposed and too high on the ISO uh, it's a, definitely a big learning experience going into what will end up being my next video uh, the actual build of this turned out pretty well uh, how it, everything works obviously but uh, definitely some iterations that I'd like to change up uh, if I weren't just using extra parts that I had laying around like th this was using a t-slot aluminum extrusion rather than a v-slot if I were using a v-slot one it would have been a little easier to do some kind of like channel wheels instead uh, the using the rollers worked but it's a little bit noisy you can get some better wheels for a v-slot one that aren't going to be quite as loud though with the rate that the camera moves for the typical use of it it's not really that big of an issue so a lot of this uh kind of like figuring out how like after effects works how adobe premiere works and how all that kind of connects together uh, that's what the primary goal of making this video was along with the actual like engineering aspects of it. I use Fusion 360 and laying out a good project and all that. Uh, you can actually see here like the focus is a little rough so I had some uh, learning experience to do there. Another thing that I realized was uh, I was trying to do a big focus on using the the 4k features of my camera which I don't think the 4k is really all that necessary. Uh, it actually caused quite a few issues with my camera overheating and then it would shut off without letting me know. Uh, if I already do 1080p instead, I think it would be, not only would the files be smaller, but it probably wouldn't overheat my camera like that either. Make it, the editing quite a bit easier to work with as well. And nowadays with the AI and the, where it's at, uh, it's something that I, I think, I could just upscale from the 1080p to 4k and you probably wouldn't even notice a difference so here we're just doing the the primary assembly of it uh, there's a, a couple things particularly right here that i think i would change in a, a new a mark ii version of this uh, one being that motor is sitting a little bit loose in there uh, one thing I did change after is I just put a couple of washer inserts in there to really solidify it in place. It was a little bit too wobbly. I'd also like to have uh, dropped the whole frame down into where the ex aluminum extrusion is. It got a little bit top heavy and I didn't necessarily care for that. It did make the design quite a bit simpler. So that was pretty much everything to do with the, the assembly of it. Uh, at this point doing more of the prototype board stuff so uh, this is using uh, an ESP32 and a couple of uh, motor drivers uh, so this wasn't really necessarily too complex 
Uh, everything worked out pretty well for what I wanted. Uh, one thing that would have been nice to do, but I didn't have the extra parts, we're using headers for the ESP32 processor itself. I used some headers for the motor drivers. I figured at least those, uh, they're more likely to burn out than the ESP32, but not that much more so. Uh, with this design, I ended up doing two PCB prototype boards like this and then connect the two of them together through wires. Uh, so I ended up with two separate boards. I, think I, I was debating on trying to do my first uh, like ordered and designed uh, PCB board and I decided not to go with it just because I was trying to get something small iterative out there that it's kind of a quick side project bit. So it, this is probably the 30% of this project was just putting all the components together in this. There's a ton of soldering, a ton of wiring, a whole bunch of testing to make sure that the the actual the lines that we're connecting were supposed to be connected and actually did. Uh, it's pretty easy with this many connections to make some kind of a solder mistake somewhere. This is actually the first one that I've done uh, solid core wire for connecting everything and I liked it a lot better than doing the stranded wire. It's just a little bit easier to make sure that everything was aligned right and actually like guide the wire to the right place. Other than that, like, one thing I, I'd like to figure out going forward for another video is this lighting right now is particularly exposed. It's kind of necessary for like seeing the actual soldering, but it, it would be nice if this wasn't so blown out. So I might have to experiment a little bit more with lighting conditions for this. Another bit that I wanted to make sure as I was filming this is I like it, it really is a, a big endeavor doing the actual video recording while putting something together. And so I like you can see I, I'm not particularly dressing up. I got a, I'm wearing basically what I would wear to bed. Uh, I didn't want to go too over the top with it, so this is kind of a this is what I'm doing in my evenings kind of thing. Come join me. That's mostly what this video and what future videos are going to be like. Not too uh, out there as far as professionalism or anything. I'm no expert in any of these fields. It's just me kind of mucking around and experimenting, seeing how things work and seeing what I can kind of come up with. So you can kind of see that not, this is definitely not the prettiest board design ever, but it, it at least worked. All the wires connected and everything's driving well. Uh, a lot of the camera sliders that I've seen online, they tend to have some kind of like little display attached to them. I didn't really want to go that far with it, so everything is controlled just through wireless. So the VSP32 has a, a like a micro web server on it, that then that connects. You're, you connect with your phone or laptop, and then directly to it and then it has a, just a tiny rest API that you do the actual control for it so you can tell the, uh, the each of the axes how far they should go and at what speed. There's a lot more uh, software wise that could go into the, the control board itself on doing like a telling it to look at a specific spot and doing the, like the vector math to, to find out exactly how much orientation should be going. So there's definitely a lot of screws and wires and all this, but it kind of came together fairly well. Uh, I did end up leaving the, the two primary, particularly the long wire here, exposed, and so it just kind of drags along. Uh, it probably would be better if it had uh, some kind of a track to go with it. So that's with everything assembled. So now this is just the, the testing phase. Make sure the camera actually works, goes up and down. Do a little bit of a, a spinning with this is controlling with the computer and then doing a little bit of a time lapse with it. So I'll end up using this camera quite a bit going forward. And so some of the future videos will likely use this. Well, that pretty much sums it up. That's the build. If you'd like to follow along, like and subscribe and all that jazz, and we'll see you in the next one.